Good morning and welcome to Old Paramus Reformed Church. A few announcements before we begin worship. If you haven't noticed, there are Advent devotionals on the back table. Grab one and uh, you're only a week behind and you can catch up, of course, if you don't have one yet. And then uh, it is Communion Sunday and so what we'll do is the elements have been passed out. If you haven't received the elements, go to the back. We have two elders back there. Just to go over it again, on the small side is a little piece of bread. Maybe the worst tasting bread I've ever had. Sorry about that. But it, it's, you know, it's the body of Christ. And then uh, you just peel it off and I will say a few words. We'll take it together. Then you turn it upside down and you peel that off. And then there is juice or wine depending on the ones that you have grabbed. Okay? So that's communion. We haven't done a full communion liturgy probably in about eight or nine months. So today, we're going to do that. Just uh, the words are beautiful, and we want to keep those in our minds. And so we'll have the full communion liturgy today. Also, we have a congregational meeting after this service in the fellowship hall. I'm also going to do it over Zoom. There is a cable on the, the floor. I did put some... Uh, rugs over it so just be mindful of that so you don't trip over it but that allows people who are unable to come in person also to come on zoom and it's just a single item agenda where we'll vote for the new slate of consistory for 2021 um, all that information's in your bulletin our larger congregational meeting will be in january and we're gonna have to start talking about what that will look like in covid so this is just hopefully a brief meeting, just that item, and then uh, you'll be able to have the rest of your day. So that's that aspect. Also for worship, we've made, we continue to have to adjust and make changes. Uh, this last week, every month, I meet with the interfaith group, and it's interesting to talk with them. When it comes to worship practices, we're about in the middle. There are several worshiping congregations in Ridgewood that have not met in person yet. And then there's other ones that have really a full more schedule of, of worship. And it looks at this point, I'm not a political expert, but it looks like our Governor Murphy is really refraining from making any restrictions, any new restrictions for houses of worship. And so we've been balancing that out. And so for there are masks in the back right Right there. Nope, you're past it, Scotty. <laughs> right there on the wall, you got it. I'm giving some instructions, too. So, um, we do have extra masks, if you forget it. That's, that's the conversation. And so, when it comes to worship, for Christmas Eve, we're going to have an in-person, at this point, that's what's scheduled, 5 p.m. service. And then for what we call the 11 p.m., is going to be actually recorded prior and posted. So technically, you'll probably be able to watch it before 11, but if you're a traditionalist and you want it at 11, which the Millers are going to do that, um, that'll be there. The reason we're doing that is we wanted to continue to have our musicians, and so we're having more musicians for the 11 o'clock, and, and so by recording segments, we can have more people involved because, in, in fact, less people will be in the building at one time. And so that... Those are ways we're trying to adapt to that. And also, just to make it feel more like Christmas, and uh, we haven't seen all our choir members in a while, we are doing what they call o adiphons or phones. Stuart corrects me. I, it's Latin. And what it is is seven days before Christmas Eve, you have these vespers that go through seven names of the Messiah. And O come, O come, Emmanuel, if you look at all the verses, we only have three of them, um, really describe that. So that's what we're going to do. That'll be posted just to kind of get you into the Christmas spirit and also it'll have our choir members involved in it. So it should be wonderful and look for that. So those are the things coming along. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And that's a lot of announcements. And I think we're now ready to begin worship with our prelude.
At this point, I'd like to call Jim and Gail up to light our Advent wreath. We'll begin with our second verse of In the Bleak Midwinter. Bob will sing that for us. God, we light the second candle of Advent. I forgot to give you the microphone. We seek your comfort, both mighty and tender, you come. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you. Isaiah announced God's coming to a people exiled in a broken and parched wilderness. He declared that God's, exemption, God's redemption would make a highway in the desert and change the rough places into plain. God would come as a shepherd, feeding, leading, and cradling the weary flock. This Advent, we seek such a God. Saving God, look upon your world and heal your land and your people. Prepare us to be changed. This Advent, teach us to be tender and just as you are. Amen. Thank you. Our first Christmas carol is number 28, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Bob will sing that for us, verse 1. Amen. On this Communion Sunday, we know we must prepare ourselves to re receive communion, and we know the promise that if we come before God and we confess our sins, we will find forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I'll be leading us in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Faithful God, we confess that we have not led lives of holiness. We suffer from impatience, apathy, and greed. We have not been at peace. We repent of these offenses and turn to you in love. Forgive our iniquity and pardon our sins, that we may walk in righteousness to the glory of your name. Amen. Now hear the assurance of God's forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, by the mercy of Christ, your sins are forgiven, for salvation is at hand for all who turn to God. Amen. And now hear what our Lord says about the law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Our scripture passages for our service come from Isaiah 41 through 11, the promise of the Messiah, and then our gospel lesson, Mark 1, 1 through 8. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to hear God's word through prayer. Mighty God, send your Holy Spirit to speak peace, that the good news of this age may be, may be proclaimed through your word, which stands forever. Amen. Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. And now our gospel lesson, Mark 1, 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And, from, and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Enough already with this COVID stuff. Enough! It's exhausting. The numbers rise, and my wife works at the school, Seth goes to school, and cases come, and then they might have come across someone. You gotta make plans and changes, and uh, my whole family was going to come out for Christmas. They're not now, which I'm really sad because I love my family, but I'm even a little more sad because my nephew's not quite one years old, and I want to see this cute kid that I see pictures of. So enough with COVID, right? It just is exhausting, and it has put us in a spot that is easily, we just easily look at the negative of everything. And it just has a weight on us. And we just concluded, well, maybe not concluded, a political election that was tough. And I'm not saying what you should have voted for, but, you know, we felt the anxiety 
and the strain of that. Enough. Enough, we say. There are moments in life where we just feel so overwhelmed that it's just, we have to say enough is enough and we want some type of relief from it. We experience that now with all that's happening and I'm sure in your life you've experienced it in other ways. I've experienced it personally and I've also watched as a pastor as people sit at the deathbed of a loved one who is dying of cancer. It really is probably one of the most sacred places to be, but the pain there is, is difficult. As you're watching your loved one in pain, and you, enough is enough, you say. You want relief, you want it to be done. There are other times in life where we've made so many mistakes, and you just have painted yourself in the corner and you say enough is enough. Our Isaiah passage is really that. That God's chosen people are saying enough is enough. They're just feeling the pain and the burden of their own mistakes and also those things that come at them that was really no fault of their own. Right? That's in life. There are things that are our fault and then there's pain and suffering that are not. And we cry out to God enough is enough. And we hear this beautiful image of making a straight way and clearing all the obstacles out so that God can be near and close and we can feel the relief and newness that comes from God. In Advent, this is what it's all about. As we wait in maybe pain and suffering, we call out for relief and that's what we're waiting for. And we have that promise that we can find that in God and that Jesus came to this earth for that very reason. It's interesting, right? John the Baptist went out into the desert and he was proclaiming that we needed to repent and be baptized. It's interesting he chose the desert. I mean, we had to be by the River Jordan, of course, but the desert is a an image in the Bible of a dangerous place, barren and wild animals and danger everywhere. And that's where he proclaims that God is going to give them relief. And so in Advent, there is that sense that we must repent of our sins. And when we think of baptism, we have our baptismal font right there present. I think Often, for me personally, there's that image of having our sins washed away. And that's an aspect of Advent. We think of maybe Lent and Easter, but Advent also has that. That we just need to turn to God and through the promise of baptism and through repentance be cleansed of our sin. But baptism goes beyond that. That's only one aspect of our life. Baptism also, if we remember, which I'm sure you have memorized, our baptismal liturgy. The water cleanses, refreshes, renews, sustains. And so it's not just a cleansing water, but it's a renewing and healing water. So if you've had any pain and suffering in your life, baptism is a promise of making your life new and letting go of those past hurts. So Advent is a time of letting go. Letting go of our sin and anything, any mistakes we may have made. And also letting go of any pain and suffering that we're still clinging on to. I'm sure you remember, probably about three or four years ago for Advent, we used Ann Weems kneeling in Bethlehem. That's the thing that fell off the pulpit, if you noticed that earlier. And uh, there is one that just... Since that moment, I still come back to every Advent. And her title of the poem is Yesterday's Pain. She says this, Some of us walk into Advent tethered to our unresolved yesterdays. The pain still stabbing, the hurt still throbbing. It's not that we don't know better. It's just that we can't stand up anymore by ourselves. On the way to Bethlehem, will you give us a hand? Those are beautiful words, I think, that most pain does not resolve itself 
overnight. And that idea we have to let go and that we need others and we need God to sustain us in that process. So in Advent, it is that time of letting go. And my hope and prayer is that you'll feel God's grace and newness surround you and that you'll be able to let go of those past pains. And very soon, I'm calling Rick up, we will have communion. The sacrament of baptism is of grace, and so is communion. It reminds us that Christ was present here on earth and that Christ gave his life so that we might have life and have it in abundance. So as we come to the communion table, may we all let go of those past hurts and mistakes and find newness. Amen. At this time, I'd like to call Rick up. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate is a feast of remembrance, of communion, and of hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent of the Father into the world to assume our flesh and blood and to fulfill for us all obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross. By his death, resurrection, and ascension, he established a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken by him. We come to have communion with this same Christ who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of the bread, he makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us unto life eternal. In the cup of blessing, he comes to us as the vine in whom we must abide if we are to bear fruit. We come in hope, believing that this bread and this cup are a pledge and foretaste of the feast of love, of which we shall partake when his kingdom has fully come, when with unveiled face we shall behold him, made like unto him in his glory. Since by his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ has obtained for us the life-giving Spirit who unites us all in one body so that we are to receive this supper in true love, mindful of the communion of saints. All those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are welcome to the communion table. As I said earlier, our elements have been given all in one. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places. O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name.
the desert a highway to your God. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus for the sin of the whole world and the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices.
Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may obtain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when they had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. At this time, take your elements and pull out the bread. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Amen. Now turn over your elements. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our prayer of intercession this morning you'll find in your bulletin. We're going to do it responsibly. December 1st was World Communion or World AIDS Day where we recognize the disease of AIDS and what it has done throughout the world. And we pray for the healing of the world in that area. And so we'll do that together. Let us pray. What will it take, O oh God, for us to see the vision fulfilled in the land of the living? What will it take, O oh God, for what will it take, O oh God, to free our siblings from HIV and AIDS? What will it take, O oh God, for us to recognize your word to become flesh living among us with AIDS? What will it take, O oh God, for the dance to begin, treatments to continue, and deaths to end? We pray in the strong name of Jesus who lives among us and in us and through us all and who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn is number 24, Away in the Manger, verses 1 and 3. And it's actually the cradle song, which we don't sing as much, but that was the one that was suggested for us, and Bob will sing. Thank you. 
hear God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn towards you and give you peace. Amen.